An American homosexual poet once described Chicago as hog butcher to the world, or words to that effect. It was an adequate assessment, teeming with stockyards full of cows waiting to be blasted into shards of bones, pools of fat and slabs of steak. Chicago has long been viewed as the brutal hub of America's Midwest. This legacy has been enhanced by such things as the 1968 police riots, the corruptly stifling reign of Mayor King Richard Daley, and the racist political Donnybrooks that have been raging since that self-crowned monarch's death. Quote, the Windy City, unquote, is indeed a moral cess upon which the country looks in awe. And mass-murdering clown, pederast, John Wayne Gacy, was not the only man living in the city's crawl spaces. As Henry Miller once noted, quote, Chicago is a vast, unorganized lunatic asylum. Nothing can flourish there but vice and diseases, unquote. It is perhaps fitting, then, that one of the most thoroughly diseased bands of the Reagan era, Big Black, made their entrance to the world via Chicago's scorched and bloody portals. Nominally birthed during the last wheeze of hardcore punk formalism, from their very first croak, Big Black offered a vision far uglier than that preferred by their mohawked non-brethren. A front the walloping thud of a drum machine, its dials turned to destroy. Big Black began setting collegiate panties adrip in 1982, with a smorgasbord of heisted guitar riffs and squealing cuss shouts of pure, loose aggression. Initially a studio-only project, the band became an actual performing entity, fueled by barbecue ribs and inexpensive beer a year after their inception. The records and live shows that followed were monolithic mud rustles through a valley of gnarled and asymmetrical ginch crave. Thump followed peel, followed scream accusation, followed the bup of exploding fireworks, all filtered through a screen of undifferentiated cunny crave. Several clever boy crack monsters passed through the ranks during their nascent period, but after their second EP, Big Black found linear stability as a trio, with Santiago Durango on big guitar, Dave Riley on bass, and Steve Albini on small guitar and vocals. Big Black cut a rug that many were compelled to beat. The band was not necessarily met with uniformly open arms and hastily dropped trousers, but they were met on their own terms too. Eventually, the idiot masses were swayed by the gigantic cudgel of Big Black's noise. It was, after all, nigh and impossible to duck. Now, just as many have become ready to offer their flesh as sacrifice, Big Black have, somewhat perversely, decided to pack it in. Dave will return to Barber College, Santiago will undertake legal studies, and Steve will once again be found pimping a string of new wave hoes near Chicago's convention center. To quote a great philosopher whose name escapes me, quote, what was will never be again, unquote, or something. Big deal. Howdy, partners. So, what do you fellows hope to accomplish by this publicity stunt? I refer, of course, to your highly the theatrical breakup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you Texans. Well, it's just like what our manager told us to do. At one point, we decided that if we kept going any longer, we'd have to get married because our family wouldn't understand. We'd probably start to suck, too. And we didn't want to get married. All right. Sucking and getting married about the same things, too, when you think about it. What is the law that Santiago hopes to study? Um, the law that uh, keeps um, long-haired uh, rock critics that wear goatees from being shot on sight. Is it possible for an I, I legal alien to get a law degree in the U.S. Um, 
I got an uncle named Rico Chump. <laughs> Is your all in Big Black officially pro crack? Absolutely. Oh, certainly. Absolutely. Do you really I, need to ask that? Do, um, I don't know if they have crack in Texas, Daniel, but um, it's real easy to make. All you need is some ammonia, some baking soda, uh, well, some street-grade Coke, and... Back in the old days, they called it Freebase, but uh, it's like there's Freebase and uh, spouse abuse, and then there's crack and beating the shit out of your wife. So, Dave, how was it that you came to turn Bootsy Collins onto crack? Oh, Bootsy and I, I mean, I remember, I was with him when he bought his first Sunburst Precision Bass, and um, he just needed needed a focus, and I thought I was the person to give it to him. Need I say more? No, that's all right. That's okay. You want, yeah. Why do you all wear those stupid hats? What's to hide? Why don't you all wear Dixons like real men? <laughs> 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 Well, I'm sure Stetsons are pretty easy to come by in Texas, where you're from, Daniel. But, <laughs> but uh, up here in the north, we have to settle for, you know, fedoras. And it uh, makes us feel more like, like impotent old men, which is something we try to do a lot. We're impotent young men, and we're going to obviously grow into impotent old men. So you know, I can see that glimmer of recognition in your eye when I make a statement. I, man, just because I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you cowboy. <laughs> so, um, Santiago and Dave, had you ever worn a hat that idiotic before you meet Mr. Albini, the gypsy? <laughs> oh. uh, you mean Scooter? <laughs> <laughs> who? Scooter? I mean Scooter who played bass with stations? Um, yes, well, you know, I, I, was, I was nothing until I met Steve. And don't call me a gypsy. I'm sorry for that. You've probably still got cow shit under your heels. Yeah, okay. Let's do it again. Santiago and Dave, is it true that you all had so to grab the youngsters with Montana Baker on the show prior to playing <laughs> your first live show with the band? Yeah, yeah. That's all I could afford to eat, you know. That's, uh... Rocky Mountain Oysters was, was basically a delicacy. I, at least I thought it was a delicacy until I was about 13 or so. And then they told you it was just cow balls. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I had no problem with that at all. It's, like I said, it's what I could afford. That's my background. I'm very proud of my background. I hope I never uh, forget where I Shut came up. from. Unfortunately, it's all been downhill from, since then. Since you grabbed the oysters? Since I grabbed the oysters. What involvement did you have with bands prior to Big Black? What bands do you all try? I blew Vic Bondi ones. Oh, yes? Yes. <laughs> what was the second part? It was very bitter. What bands do you all draw? <laughs> C-H-A-V. What? Oh, W. Chaw. Chaw. What brands do we chaw? Oh, what oh, chewing sorry, tobacco. What brands, sure. What brands oh, okay. do you all chaw? What chewing tobacco? You Texans, you're so obsessed. Uh, I'm a red man. Man, myself, I chew, chaw red man. I think Santa's days of work. Tobacco. <laughs> Sometimes acne. Acne. What about you, beach nut Me? plug? Just uh, lick my hands after I whack off. <laughs> you can't chew on it much, but it packs a wallop, fools me. Santiago, how many bands are currently playing your riffs? Oh, now you've asked a question. How many stars are there in the sky? <laughs> Who knows? How many grains of sand in the Sahara? How many writers from Boston with goatees? <laughs> <laughs> Where did the band's name come from? Had you ori originally envisioned... <laughs> 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 yeah. Had you originally envisioned it uh, as a funk band? Do you will play only squall dances? Yes, we, we call ourselves Big Black mainly because It's a short name that fits well on a on a square dance poster. A Which barn dance. Yeah. Which of your songs is it that reminds me of Woody Bully? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> what was that one we had? Uh, uh, woolly fascist dictator obsession? Uh, Something like that. Woolly small town massacre. You know, when you put your heart into putting out these records, though, it all melts into one big good thing that you, like, um, evacuate into the universe. Shh. Shh. He's from Texas. He'll shoot us. Oh. Are you all circumcised? <laughs> Uh, you mean around <coughs> around the penis? I'm circumcised around the top of my head. I don't Whatever know. you want. Yeah. See, my father circumcised me with his bare teeth, but I guess that's just because I'm Polish and Yugoslavian. So. Yeah. yeah. Why are you asking? The fucker choked. <laughs> Why are you asking? Because <laughs> see them. <laughs> see them two pearl-handled revolvers. Is what? Don't ask no questions. Right. Which of you has the largest penis? Me. Dave. Oh. When you roll it I out, I would then. know that. No, I'm kind of. Let me rephrase that. How long is a penis on one of your ranch hands? Roll it out, Dave. <laughs> Does the longest penis also carry the most notches? Oh, yes. Apparently, we've witnessed a few uh, notches. Which penis has the most festive name? Mine. <laughs> oh, most. yes? I always thought mine. Mine is Skipper. What's yours? <laughs> oh, Lord. It's all Skipper. And the Skipper. rest What's of the band. Well, I get there it. Ain't no penis. Zeke. Mine is Zeke. Of course, Ezekiel. It depends on kind of what mood I'm in with it. And I'm, I'm undecided between Alfalfa and Thor. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the band is fairly notorious for roping and branding the girlfriends and wives of colleges. What were your <laughs> most interesting experience in this area? Uh, we are, uh, well, we all once trained um, the uh, future wife and present wife now, but she was a future wife then of a, a, uh, of a, uh, a name uh, fanzine writer from Boston. Yeah, as a matter of fact, that was... Likes, yeah, he likes to chop wood up in Vermont. Yeah, that was quite a tag team we pulled on her. We bent her over the hood of a taxi cab, stood in a long line. It was us and the entire audience from a gig in Boston. And he still refuses to either bathe or shave. Mm -hmm. And I would like to know, how was it with Nancy? Nancy? Nancy. Which Nancy? Ring. Those smart women, you don't want to fuck those smart women. They want you to buy them breakfast and all sorts of other ridiculous shit. <laughs> You guys are all kind of shrimpy to be sashaying around as high-stepping as you do. If you often run into trouble because your attitudes are so much bigger than your dungarees. <laughs> you, you, oh, you Texans, you're so quick with that Western wit. Uh, people confront us on elevators all the time and shout at us and tell us they're going to beat us up, but they never do. Why? Are they afraid of your big muscles? Maybe. Uh, I think they're afraid that we'll just shout, please stop, don't, I'll cry. Okay. <laughs> all you really need to do is say, quit your belly aching. You told me, yeah. <laughs> Whose ass has the most expressive hair? <laughs> <laughs> As the... As the only Italian in the band, I think I'm the only one qualified to answer in the ass hair department, and I think it must be me. It's sort of a, a, a prince, kind of a soft wave. <laughs>